Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to find the domain of the given functions. Looking at part A, finding a domain means finding all of the x values that would make sense to plug in. That wouldn't cause a problem. Examples of problems are it would include things like the square root of a negative number, or perhaps dividing by zero. For this type of function, where we don't have any square roots, nothing odd is going on, we're taking an absolute value, but you can take the absolute value of any number that you want, the only issue that might come up is for the denominator to equal zero. So when you have a rational function, uh, one in a fraction form, look for the restricted values that would make the denominator zero. Now looking at this denominator, absolute value of x is going to be a positive number, and then we're going to add a positive number to it. You can't add two positive numbers and ever get zero. So I can tell you right now that there are no restricted values. Now a lot of students don't like that because you're not solving an equation. So here's another way to think about it. Whenever you have a denominator, set the denominator equal to zero. In this case, absolute value of x plus seven equals zero, and then solve the resulting equation. This is an absolute value equation. This would give us the absolute value of x equals negative seven when we isolate the absolute value. So here again, we see that it's not possible for this to have a solution because the absolute value of a number is never going to be equal to a negative, no solution. This means that this function m of x has no restricted values, or in other words, that the domain includes everything, negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. Now there are several ways to represent this, but in the instructions we were asked for interval notation, so the appropriate response would be negative infinity to infinity. That's the solution to part A. Part B is a very similar function. Again, the only thing that can go wrong is if we were to plug in a number that would cause the denominator to equal zero. Now in this case, we're subtracting. So when we subtract two positive numbers, it is possible to get zero. So let's go ahead and set up the equation that we solve when we wanna find out if there are any restricted values for a rational expression. Absolute value of x minus seven is the denominator. I'm gonna set that equal to zero and solve for x. Isolating the absolute value, we get absolute value of x equals positive seven, which is possible. In fact, if the absolute value of x is equal to positive seven, there are two possibilities. Either x is seven or x is negative seven. Well, that makes sense, right? If we were to plug seven or negative seven into this denominator, we would get seven minus seven equals zero. So is the domain seven and negative seven? No, these are the restricted values, the ones we're not allowed to plug in. So the domain is going to include everything but those values. Since we're going to write our answer in interval notation, I find using a number line is really helpful. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna mark off the restricted values, negative seven and seven in their proper numerical order. I'm gonna cross them off because these are the numbers that we don't want. What we do want is everything in between. So for example, this first segment represents negative infinity to negative seven, but not negative seven. The second segment is negative seven to seven, not including the endpoints. And this third segment, well, that's everything from seven to infinity. So your domain is gonna be the union of these intervals. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. You can leave your questions in the comments below. 